the Grand Theft Auto series has always held a uniquely special place in my heart. My earliest memory of playing a video game is playing Grand Theft Auto 3 with my dad on the PS2, taking turns with missions and exploring the world. I was born in 1997 for context, so you can imagine how young I was. I remember being so taken with the setting, the entire vibe of the game, from the sound effects of the guns and the cars, to the radio, and even how the menu and the pickup sound. It all comes together in such a neat package that gives the game its unique flavor. Rockstar has achieved this for every subsequent Grand Theft Auto game, making its world the true main character. I could talk to no end about any Grand Theft Auto game, but for now I'd like to talk about my favorite. The game I've spent the most time playing, and the one I just keep coming back to. I remember the day Grand Theft Auto 4 arrived on release day. We had, of course, pre-ordered. I put it in my original Xbox 360, and I started the game. I want to be clear that I was playing on like a 27-inch CRT TV, and it looked amazing. It was brand new, and for the first time, it was my game for my Xbox. Now, though, my preferred way to play the game is on PC, more specifically my Steam Deck. Grand Theft Auto 4 has been talked about ad nauseum on YouTube, so this won't be a review. Not really. Just an eclectic collection of things that I love about this game. Things that convey its unique character, its setting, atmosphere, and some of its activities. These are the joys of Grand Theft Auto 4. Grand Theft Auto 4 is a time capsule. A moment in time captured by Rockstar Games. A moment during the rise of the internet, but before social media became such a big part of our lives. A time where everybody has a phone, but before smartphones became the norm. Everything from the cars, to the clothes. It feels modern and relatable, but also old and comfortable. Driving through the city and interacting with the world through various shops and activities, or the internet, which I will get to shortly, they all elicit such emotion for me and I don't quite know what it is. But that's what this video is about, it's just me talking about what I love about this game. Maybe you feel it too, who knows? It doesn't really need to be said that I'm not a New Yorker. I've never even been to America. So if you currently live, have lived, or even just have visited New York or New Jersey, I would like to ask that you give me the benefit of the doubt and try to see this place as I do. The city and environments are oppressive, dominated by shades of gray and brown. And if you're lucky, the sun will shine bright enough that it will coat the city in a warm golden hue. Liberty City is perpetually stuck in autumn, or fall, for all of you over there. You know who you are. Early in the game, the bridges are even closed because of a terror threat, and guns have been completely outlawed by the mayor. The map is smaller than the state of San Andreas, but that's okay. It also presents its version of New York much differently than that of Grand Theft Auto 3. This is supposed to be the land of opportunity, a place where anyone can make it, no matter who they are or where they come from. A land of freedom. This is, of course, a fallacy. A pure fabrication. It's an idea that you yourself learn isn't true when you first see the reality of Roman's life. With his old car, shitty apartment, and his failing business. Not to mention his numerous debts to known criminals. Each part of the map has its own identity. Broker is old. A run-down ex-city. The port where you start the game, as well as the Hove Beach area, give you a rather cold introduction to the city. There's a lot of crime, and it's taken a clear toll. These are the areas in which gangs thrive. Many Eastern Europeans ended up here after escaping the Balkan Wars, trying to make a new life for themselves, while the city is pushing back at them at nearly every turn. There are some middle and upper class areas, home to business types and young artists. Firefly Island is closed, its rides closed down and in disrepair. Dukes has a cleaner image, nice homes, nice park, as well as Francis International Airport a location that was THE hotspot for GTA 4's online mode. I'm sure there are many out there who remember entire lobbies hanging out at the airport. There's always something about airports in GTA. Does anybody know what that is? I don't know. Bohan is a small island that feels like more of an extension of Broker. It's used as a stepping stone between the first area and the bigger city, so not much can really be said about it. But if you try to drive around this island, you'll have done a full loop before you know it. It's tiny. The feeling of crossing the bridge to a new island is impactful. Going from Broker and Dukes, residential areas with less structured roads that have more curves and bends, a more open and calmer atmosphere, to the island of Algonquin with its dense traffic, towering skyscrapers and long straight roads. It's like entering a different world. The people here are different. 
They speak differently, act differently. There's a tangible sense of urgency in the air. This is a place that keeps pushing forward. It's the city that never sleeps, after all. Everyone is constantly on the move, all seemingly with a place to be. There's active construction everywhere. The city is growing, thriving even. Despite the wealth of downtown, the northern portion of the island is noticeably filled with housing projects, home to the people Liberty City would rather forget. There are higher-end clothing stores in the city, such as Perseus and Modo, a market improvement over the Russian store in Hove Beach. There are yellow taxis everywhere, sometimes as far as the eye can see. You can get a helicopter tour of the city, take in the sights that way, and learn about different landmarks. A borough that's particularly pleased with itself, home to artists and such. Middle Park is the only real pocket of nature in Algonquin, with a large pond and a few interesting sights. The toilets here remind me of when I was a kid playing Grand Theft Auto 3, which is a sentence I honestly never thought I'd say. The state of Alderney is more of a suburban territory, with many vast mansions and other large homes, to more modest housing in central Alderney, many industrial areas, docks, and the Alderney State Correctional Facility. This neighbourhood was always of particular interest to me as a kid. It was like the houses you'd see on TV. Or well, so I thought at the time. But I suppose there is something about it. Alderney is removed from Liberty City. Far from the big city energy. Somewhere you could raise a family. Maybe even retire to. Happiness Island is full of tourists and fast food vendors. On the Statue of Happiness you can find this jumper. An odd collectible. I wish there were more clothes you could find like this in GTA games. The statue herself has Hillary Clinton's face, and is holding a cup of steaming hot coffee. A reference to Rockstar's prior controversy with the hot coffee mod in GTA San Andreas. And of course, you can't talk about the Statue of Happiness without talking about Liberty City's beating heart. Happiness Island is an area that you won't find yourself in very often, so taking the time to visit properly is worth it, even if it's just to get some sweet threats. There are many interiors in the game, most of them tied to missions, but explorable and free roam too. There are apartment buildings you can enter. Some housing projects can be entered. This lawyer's office has an explorable interior. There are many fast food places around the map, as well as restaurants. Clock and Bells. Burger Shots. The Superstar Cafe. There are various locations for each of these. There are strip clubs. Hospitals. Laundromats. The sex shop in Broker. The Homebrew Cafe. Also, interestingly, this pub. The Majestic Hotel is another notable location. Both the ground level and the top floor are accessible. There are warehouses and factories that are partially or fully explorable. There are no ammunition stores in Liberty City due to the city's gun laws. Illegal back alley gun stores are dotted around the map, so you can buy your firearms there instead. There's a large Turismo dealership in the city, a small, lonely car dealership in Alderney, and a motorcycle dealership, also in Alderney. The museum is of particular interest to me. It's only used in one mission, DLCs notwithstanding, yet it's quite detailed and includes a fully destructible dinosaur skeleton. There are of course other accessible interiors, but I can't go over all of them. A great amount of fun can be had fighting the police in a lot of these places. I loved it, it's like a survival mode. I hope that's not too strange. But I'm willing to bet good money that everyone else did it at least once. There's a level of depth that is unmatched by any other GTA game. Even GTA 5. The world is alive, detailed, and so interesting to explore. There are nooks and crannies all over the map just begging to be seen and taken in. Most enterable locations are old, dilapidated, with some nicer locations sprinkled in here and there, your apartments being a few of those. Most of these places are decidedly cold and unwelcoming, and when you get to places like the hotel, you feel out of place, like you don't belong here. All of this culminates in an experience for you that's not unlike that of Nico himself. You're present in the world, but you're disconnected from your surroundings. 
a cog in a broken machine. You don't belong here. Grand Theft Auto 4 was the first game that gave you a mobile phone. One that could be used to call friends, or be called by friends. You could change your ringtone and customize your wallpaper with a theme. You could receive text or calls that would progress the story, or maybe it would just be your friend texting you to berate you for not hanging out with them. You can even call certain characters after major story events, or maybe after they just texted you. Hey Roman, I got your text. Crazy. I've got my hands full at the moment with these charming money lenders I know. When you meet new characters, you can call your friend and talk about what you've been up to and who you've met, if it's relevant to them. <laughs> I hear you're working with little Jacob. He's a good man, Nico. A good man. It makes you feel like your friends in the game are actually out there, doing their thing, and living their lives. Sometimes they're busy, and sometimes they don't even come to the phone at all. The phone opens many storytelling and gameplay opportunities, as you've no doubt just heard. The phone is an extension of Nico, a way for him to connect to the wider world, and not just what's in front of him. There are a few numbers that you can call, other than the ones you have in your contacts. You can call 911 to request emergency services. Hello, you're through to the Liberty City Emergency Services. But something you might not know is that if you dial 911 in a car that's so badly damaged that it won't start, Start, please! That car will spring back to life. I'll admit I've had to use this trick quite a few times over the years. There is a number that you can call to find out what song is playing on the radio, or in the world around you. Dial 948-555-0100 and you'll be put through to a recording of Laszlo Jones for his sponsor, Zit. Hey, this is Laszlo for Zit. Let me hear the track and we'll text you the artist and the name of the song. This is the only way to find the names and artists of songs in-game. Rockstar's version of Shazam. In a time where your phone probably couldn't search the internet, this would have been one of the best ways to find out in real life too, at least in 2008. Cars have GPS. More expensive cars will have a GPS voice that tells you where to go and when to turn. Turn right. Turn left, then immediately left. Sometimes, in place of the regular chime, the voice will say, Bing bong. Something that never fails to amuse me. Police vehicles have an onboard police computer that you can use to look people up, see current crimes, view the most wanted list. Maybe you decide to hunt down some criminals, or maybe even all the criminals. Computers and the internet also play a big part in the game. Internet cafes are scattered across the map, a remnant of an earlier time, with old beige computers and chunky CRT monitors. And more modern PCs in the gaming zone, complete with the stylish all-black finish and LCD flat-screen monitors. There's even a classic beige printer in the corner. Email is another way to stay in touch with people. Whether that's just a longer message from someone, one that you can reply positively or negatively to, or it could be a job from Brucey. You can meet girlfriends on lovemeet.net and set up the date via email. You can buy ringtones and other MP3s as well as themes for your phone from the homepage. Some of them are particularly iconic. I don't th actually think we can play that one here. Uh, let me just show you my favorite one. I would usually bounce between that one and my other favourite one, one that brings me back to a different time. You can browse craplist.net for silly listings, and hey, why not meet a woman on this website too? Considering a career in law enforcement? Perhaps you need to open a bank account, or you just need to buy a wife right now, this minute. There's even an FIB Sting website that if you visit it, it will grant you a four star wanted level. Units, please respond. We have a sexual TV and attempting to access explicit images. There are so many hidden gems on the internet. It's all in the style of the 2007, 2008 web. It's honestly worth going through all of these websites just to see what's on here. They're all equally wild and filled to the brim with satire. The internet is still new and exciting. It's mentioned and used many times in the story, as well as pedestrians and radio hosts making mentions of blogs and email and websites. 
Laszlo, the celebrity radio personality, makes numerous mentions of the rise of the internet and the fall of radio. We're broadcasting live from the streets of Liberty City. Yeah, but nobody does live radio anymore. Nobody apart from me. We're going to be doing a radio show and a podcast about a radio show and, and a blog that, that's about the podcast that's about the radio show. It, it's, it's media intermingling. The TV was also another new introduction to GTA, with custom-made programming on three separate channels. You can watch cartoons. And I say, with a tear in my eye, Mission accomplished! Hoorah! Hoorah! Reality TV. She's got fake tits stuffed with rubies as well. It's luxury plastic surgery taken to a whole new level. And even a documentary on the history of Liberty City. This was a war agitated by a number of musket companies who knew they would win whatever the outcome. You'll encounter the fatter CRT TVs as well as flat screen TVs too. You can interact with and get to know this world by using these technologies. It's another aspect of the game that pulls you into its world and immerses you in a way that only Rockstar can. You meet a lot of different people in GTA 4 and you can choose to spend time with them by giving them a call. Roger, you want to hit the bowling alley? Cousin, I am loving the bowling. Pick me up in next hour. When I was younger, I used to hang out with everybody all the time. I loved hearing all the conversations and them commenting on the story and other events. My God, for a sociopathic killer, you're also a really miserable bastard. Thanks, man. Taking them out for a drink or some pool can be a nice distraction from the main story. A way to slow down the pace of the game for a while. Most activities can be done with anyone but some will have activities that you can only do with them, and they all have their own preferences. Bowling, despite the meme, can actually be fun from time to time. Spare, nice. Taking someone to a bar and being so drunk afterwards that you have to hail a cab because you can't drive, especially when Nico shouts, Yellow car! That's extra special to me. Friends will afford you special perks if you have a good enough relationship with them. Little Jacob, for example, will sell you weapons at a discounted price. Roman will offer you a free taxi service from one of his obviously reluctant drivers. You're a charming guy, you know that? Screw you, shitface! You remind me of my wife, man. Take advantage of my generosity and insult me at the same time! It's almost like these fake video game people like you? Like, they appreciate you. There are many girlfriends in the game, and they all have their own likes and dislikes. I could talk about Michelle forever, the government agent sent to seduce Nico and learn everything she can. But Kiki Jenkins is an interesting one. She's a lawyer that you can meet on lovemeet.net, and she can remove wanted levels up to and including three stars as part of her special ability. But her character is deeper than that. She will actually get jealous of your other girlfriends. So much so that she'll sometimes show up on your dates with other women and threaten them. If you're invited up into another girlfriend's house for some hot coffee, you'll find that while you are inside having some fun, your car has been vandalized, popped tires and other damage. It'll soon dawn on you that Kiki is stalking you. This part of the game is almost entirely optional. There'll be people who find hangouts boring and that's okay. I've just found kind of a mundane joy in it. It's a nice change from the regular gameplay. It's an excuse to slow down. And I mean literally drive slower, so you can take in the sights and listen to whatever the characters are talking about. Each Grand Theft Auto game has had its unique vibe echoed in its sound design. Everything from the menus, The menu music. To other game effects like the help box. Picking up items. Navigating through your phone. The computer sounds. All of these combine to add to that wonderful aura that the game radiates. It's like Frutiger Aero, but for sound design, if that makes any sense. These are the sounds of the times. It's all light and airy. You also have the game's incredible theme, the Soviet connection. I think anybody who's played this game will agree that it fits the setting and the narrative perfectly.
The Mission Past music, like its predecessors, is based on the game's theme. However, this time, there are different flavours of the music, dependent on the mood of the mission that you just completed. Here are a few of those flavours. <laughs> Okay, this is the last one I want to show you, but it's the best one. Music and sound are equally important, maybe even more important, than what you see. It plays on your emotions, and the music and sound design in Grand Theft Auto 4, for me, it's perfect. The radio, like any other Grand Theft Auto game, plays a huge part. I like a lot of the stations. I like Integrity 2.0 with Laszlo. I find that quite fun. But my favourite radio station is The Journey. It has exactly the same vibe that Grand Theft Auto 4 is going for. I feel like the two go together so well. And every piece of music on this radio station is iconic to me. I want to round off this video by talking about how Rockstar leaned heavily into realistic physics for this game. No Rockstar game since has had ragdoll physics as intricate or fluid as Grand Theft Auto 4. Vehicle physics are also dialed up compared to any other game they've made. Crashes feel visceral. The cars are these big, hulking metal cages that can cause massive damage if you're not a skilled driver. The weight of the cars, and frankly questionable handling on most cars, especially motorcycles, it can end up feeling extremely rewarding when you start whipping around the city in your favourite car. And it can also make for some fun police chases. With cars, as I mentioned, come crashes, and cars in GTA 4 can be obliterated by bad driving. The destruction of cars goes to an almost ridiculous level. Accidents can be almost cinematic, and the effects of the crash are usually pretty devastating. Wheels can be so badly damaged that they're angled incorrectly, or just don't work at all. Mowing down traffic cones and barriers, as well as other obstacles, all slow you down, even if just a bit. When you take a jump, you get a tangible sense of gravity doing its thing. On your journey back down to the ground, you'll most likely notice that your car isn't going to land perfectly on all four wheels. And it is not pointing forward. It looks like we have a problem here. By leaving the comfort of the earth, you've handed your fate entirely to Lady Luck. It dawns on you that your bumper clipping the ramp in that one spot has caused a chain reaction. A bad landing is only inevitable at this point, so why not just sit back and enjoy the show? The physics allow for some insane stunts if you manage to pull them off. I can do that again if I tried. As I mentioned, the ragdoll physics in the game are second to none. It's still the most involved and resource-intensive implementation Rockstar has released so far. Watch how Nico reacts to getting bumped by a car. He does his best to keep standing, pushing against the car for balance. People with low health become physically weaker, unable to stay balanced while taking punches. Nico notoriously does not wear a seatbelt, so you can go flying out of your car during particularly nasty accidents. If I had to choose one thing that grounds GTA 4 in its own reality, it would be the physics engine. In a time where having a physics-heavy game was not only the norm, but almost kind of a trend, Rockstar easily comes out on top. They use these technologies so that they're only additive to the experience, they're not just there for the sake of it. Between the cancelled Liberty City DLC for GTA 5 and the ever-dwindling prospect of a remaster, Grand Theft Auto 4 is the only way to experience this version of Liberty, and this era. Even if the city were updated for today, New York's skyline has changed so much since 2008, and many areas are radically different. A modern Liberty City just wouldn't feel the same. The era was so unique, and Grand Theft Auto 4 captures it perfectly. If you've made it this far into the video, then I would appreciate if you hit that like button. It helps me out a ton, and it helps the video get seen. This is my favourite Grand Theft Auto game, and I wanted to convey just some of the things that I love about it, and that I think are talked about a little less than others. This is kind of a different video for me, and perhaps I'll make more in the future. I enjoyed writing this and reminiscing about the game. Maybe I'll take a look at the DLC too. But for now, for this video, I hope you will take it sleazy, and I'll see you around.